welcome back to Teaching with Tania. I am Tania, of course, and I'm a second year, third grade teacher. And it's been like a month of school now, and the school year has been flying by. Like, progress reports are already going out. I'm so sorry that I have not been able to update you guys, but I am back and I am better. And I am so excited to show you guys my classroom because if you guys saw what this classroom looked like before, when I first got it back to now, like it's a functional learning space with different learning zones. I absolutely love it, and my students do as well. I actually had a few of my friends from last year come and tell me and ask, Ms. Brown, why didn't you have the LED lights or why didn't you have this one? I was in your classroom. Like every year we get bigger and better. <laughs> um, sorry I didn't have that for you, but my friends, especially because they're in fourth grade now on this hallway, so they come stop by and see Ms. Brown in your class. I'm like, you already, <laughs> you already in my class this year. I mean, you are in my class last year. So that's been fun to see their excitement. And I have definitely changed the room around. If you have not checked out my last classroom tour, you guys can see that I have definitely learned from my past mistakes last year and just making my room more functional and welcoming for my students. So So when you first come in and turn to the left, this is my student mailboxes because I don't like students going in and out of my classroom, especially for things that they should already have. So these friends should always have two sharpened pencils in their notebook. Um, we are also working on our handwriting packets. Those are like more for morning work. And then they also have their personal set of headphones that each student should have. It makes it easier to get things because you're not going in and out of the classroom looking for things. And then also like student materials, supplies, tissues, hand sanitizer, anything students may need. I moved this over here because if you watched my last video, um, my last classroom tour, my mailboxes were over there and it was a lot of back and forth. And all of my students have a number based off of where they are on the roster, ABC order. I don't like to refer to students as their number, but sometimes it's just easier to say if your number is odd, go have a seat. If your number is even, go line up and things like that. And then students have, some of the material here and then this computer should not be in here but that is the mailbox area and my students materials and then here we have the whole group class area the janitors are going to come and clean and vacuum like they do every day and then that's just a lollipop thing from my students we had a class birthday today this is my books that i like my students to remind themselves of what books that look like them that they can do anything also here are word meaningful it helps with blending, decoding, things like that. And then um, flexible seating. I plan to do a video on that and how I use these later on. And then here I also have just some other fluency games. And then on the last cubby, I have my page protectors, especially for students when we're taking tests so that they won't cheat and things like that. And then right here I have my anchor chart and my calendar. And then I also like to put like anchor charts or things that we're learning here. And our word wall, these are words that our students should basically already know and that I don't wanna see spelled wrong on their papers. Um, so we're filling them in right now. And then usually I go ahead and put our anchor charts on there so that when we're working whole group, everybody can see them. And then here we have our laptop cart and our cozy corner. So here in the cozy corner, students can read a book. I try to encourage reading and just have a literacy rich environment in my classroom. And also the cozy corner is so relaxing. Usually the student of the week is to sit in the cozy corner and I've had to allow flexible seating and heavy rules and procedures when it comes to this because every day my library was looking a mess. So we actually lost the cozy corner for a week. And so we learned how to act right, put things back and treat our books with respect and care and kindness, things like that. And then I also have some differentiated books here so that they're able to um, go ahead and read when they are able to. We don't really have that much time to free read but when we do have the chance, um, and especially at the beginning of the year when students didn't have their logins and codes like that, they were able to go ahead and pick a book and read it. I also allow students to sit here when they're doing their personalized learning time. They can sit on the crate and um, apparently somebody was there today and left their money. So that has to be given back to them. And then as we switch over here, we have our other small group area. So with this small group area, my lead comes in and basically use it as a writing center. 
Um, writing is very important because in third grade we start ELA, um, where they start taking standardized tests. So they have to know how to write sentences, things like that. So here is our writing center. Students, when they come in and she's not here, on the days that she's not here, they can go ahead and work in groups and write. And I already went ahead and modeled it for them. And then when she is here, like she's coming tomorrow, I already have um, the lesson laid out for her. And then also, these are our whiteboards and markers when we use foundations, but we've lost our whiteboards and markers because we let them dry out. So we're still working on writing that one back. But um, usually I like to use whiteboards and markers for fun, especially when we've, we've been doing a good job. So when you move over here, this is like the teacher area, basically where I house all my papers. Um, especially because last year I needed something to organize me. And last year I went ahead and used the cart and labeled it Monday through Friday. This year I'm using this, one of the mailboxes, and it has worked so much better for me, even though stuff is sticking out and it looks very unorganized. It's organized chaos for sure because I went ahead and labeled it Monday through Friday, and whatever I have for the week, whether it's our curriculum, foundation, small group, I can go ahead and pull papers, especially when I need them. Um, it's been also, it's been really difficult to go ahead and plan. So when I go ahead and batch plan, I am able to do my lessons already, but then when I go in for that week, I can go ahead on Monday, print everything out, and I'm good for the week. And I also like to keep some extras in here as well. And then moving over here, we have highlighters, scissors, things that, class materials that we use, especially when we're annotating. And this is like an anchor chart. I love that it's able to, like she can use it, my link can use it, but then also if I need to hear for small group or whole group, students can just look up here, it's very functional. And I've tried to make this space very functional for anywhere in the classroom and for all of my students. So here is my small group area where most of the time where I pull small groups or even one-on-ones with students. I absolutely love this table because, well, I wanted a kidney table. My t kidney table, got lost in the mail, it was too heavy, something happened with UPS, FedEx, whatever, that this, I had this table last year and I didn't like it, but now that I have these stools, I got them on my Amazon wish list for um, my students. It definitely helps with flexible seating. Yes, they move around a lot, but I feel like they're more focused in small groups. And don't mind the ledge because that is all the binders, like everything I'm doing, I just put my lesson plans in there. I love to do small groups, like this area makes me the most happy. And then here I have my level of readers um, based off what we're doing that week for small group and teacher organization. Um, I never did a traditional desk this year. I just put my materials right here. It looks a little junky, but that is okay. And then yeah, I have my data wall here for the students that um, are able to move. I think I did a video on this. It was one of my teaching diaries of how I created this data wall and how it influences students to move up the ranks. And then here I have my makeshift organizer. This was the organizer I did last year and I still use it from time to time, especially with extras and when students are absent. And then this is basically my teacher desk. I like this teacher desk because I can stand up and teach or I can move it up or down. Um, I have my graded papers here and also my curriculums that I teach out of. And then it's easy to have my lesson plan and my um, projector right here. And then if I need to go write something, I can go around and write quickly. And also this overhead has been really beneficial because what I'm doing on the paper is like real time um, for my students and I can also direct and see everything going on at one time. I did not think this desk will make me as productive as I have been, but it's been very good. And then as you move over here, I have my smart board where I'm able to interact and um, project my lessons. Here we have no AC, so then we have our diffuser, I mean not our diffuser, but our humidifier and it just cycles through the air with our fan. And then this is like our resource schedule and for the week. And then I have students' names there for whoever is the student of the week. Can't show you guys that. And this is where I like to model um, our handwriting based off the letters. And then the goal is to get to cursive. So we'll see about that. And um, yeah, this is where I'm able to post that stuff. And then the LED lights, the students absolutely love those. And here is a now chart and some pictures and poems that students have um, went ahead and showed. I get student gifts like almost every day, but I had to start putting them up there. But this is like a referral sheet, like our nouns, verbs, things like that. And then our chips. Chips are the way I like to use for classroom management. Um, the goal is to get to eight to have on Friday. Like we've had donuts, Takis, honey buns, 
anything they like, to be honest. Um, it definitely helps with that. But for classroom management, students start off with three and their goal is to get eight um, to participate in Fun Fridays. And then here we have um, our absent work bin and then block one and block two. These are where students turn in work at the end of the day or sometimes they put it in their binder. Um, sometimes they have to turn it in for a grade here. And then this is just like homework or things I need to pass back to them. And I have a block one and block two. Here I'm gonna put our birthdays. And then we have one hall pass because it gets too exciting when we have multiple hall passes and places that people need to go. And then here, last but not least, I have my line where students can line up at because apparently we don't know how to stand in line <laughs> without touching each other. So that's one last overview. Oh, and then I wanna show you guys what it looks like most of the time with the LED lights. Yay! I absolutely love it. But yeah, the lights are so cool. I'm able to change the colors. And we have a lot of fun with those. So, alrighty guys, so that is it for my classroom tour. Comment down below what was your favorite part of my classroom and how you have created learning zones in your classroom so that students are able to stay focused and learn to the best of their ability. This was a lot of work in progress. It's pretty minimalistic. Like I don't have a lot of things around and everything in my classroom is being used for sure because if not, I feel like it's clutter and the students don't need it, I don't need it. But also it's like an open concept so that students know what they're supposed to be doing and when. So this is what my classroom looks like this year. Thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And don't forget to create a great day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.